Well, hello, hello, everyone. This is Heather Pekin coming to you live if you're watching on Facebook right now. Uh, if you're looking at my background, sometimes I do uh, my videos up in my study. I'm actually getting ready to design uh, a new studio, so I'm so excited. So right now, I'm kind of mobile. I'm kind of like moving all around the house. Uh, so I will be revealing that in the next couple weeks. Uh, I'm slowly but surely working on it. So today I want to talk about uh, second guessing yourself and this can relate to any area of your life. Uh, particularly I work with female visionaries and leaders and I just know that this subject is going to help you in any area of your life. So if you're not familiar with my work, uh, head over to heatherpicken.com or fiercefem.com. I'm also the founder of Fierce Femme Wines. Uh, so yeah, I got a lot of I got a lot of stuff going on. So, anyways, I thought today would be perfect to talk about uh, this topic of second guessing yourself. I want to go through uh, actually around the wheel of life to talk about how this impacts you, not just in your business, not just in your career, but every single area of your life. You know, what's interesting when I'm working with women and they have other topics that are just not like focused on their business or career, but what's impacting them, let's just say in their relationships. So for example, if you're second guessing yourself, if you should stay in a relationship, I've actually worked with clients um, in these areas. They're, they're second guessing themselves, Heather, should I be doing this? And I will tell you the bottom line, when you're second guessing yourself, okay? When you tell yourself, I'm second guessing yourself, or I don't know if I should do this, you honestly know the answer. When you second guess yourself, what happens is you're injecting the values of other people into your life, and that's why you get confused, okay? So when I'm working with clients, whether they're second, second guessing themselves in how to you know, put out their business or put their brand out there, or this person is doing this over there, and they told me I shouldn't do that, you want to let go of those noises in your head. I want to give you an example of a client that I worked with. So we created what I felt was a brilliant blueprint in her business. She was, let me paint the scenario. She was shopping around or actually uh, not shopping around, but she was hopping from coach to coach, program to program, spending thousands of dollars and not getting anywhere, not making a dime. And so that was a problem. And the problem was, here's what was going on. It was, she was following everyone else's cookie, cook, cookie, cookie cutter formula and it didn't work out for her. And the reason why it didn't work out is when you're copying and pasting someone else's formula and it's not unique to you, don't expect to get the results, okay? And so we do this all the time. We look at someone, we put them on a pedestal because they're an authority figure, but we're not listening to our intuition. We're tuning out our own voice and our own voice honestly knows what's best for us, okay? So that's essentially what happened is she was listening to everyone else's advice. She wasn't in alignment with what she really wanted to do. So therefore she put herself underneath other people. Okay. So when we started working together, what was interesting is I took her through a values assessment. This is important. If you want to become in alignment with your business career or brand, you have to identify what is most important to you, what your values are, because that's how you are going to essentially create a business or your life that is in alignment with you. How many times have you taken someone else's advice only to figure out, wait a minute, this is not me. And then it's just taken you uh, months or years later to finally get it right. And so this is exactly what happened. So we worked on her formula and we got it to a point where she was so excited. So here's how I know a client is on the right path. It's not about what I think. It's about the alignment to them that they can see their vision that is clear that they're on the right path. Now, here's what is problematic. 
once you get people, other people's opinions into your head, right? Taking up mental real estate of your mind, then you start second guessing yourself. So what happened is that I asked a clarifying question. Does this feel in alignment with who you are and what you want to do? And she said, absolutely. Okay. Clarifying question. The next day, or it was a couple days later, she shows her colleagues. So this is what I don't like about you sharing stuff with your colleagues. What do you think about this? Why do you need the approval of other people when you know that this is the right path that you should be on? Okay. This, this is very dangerous. I find when people have to ask 50 million people, most of them not even qualified to get their quote unquote opinion where their opinion is really, is probably not even alignment with who you are. So what happened is she went to her colleagues, asked them what their opinion was. We just clarified that this is what she wanted to do. This was her brand, her vision, mission, and purpose. Asked her colleagues, the colleagues, you know what they said? They said, this will never work out. You're crazy. Now, rule, rule number 997, when people tell you you're crazy, you're probably on the right path. It's just that sometimes people don't have the insight and vision to know who you are, right? And when you know who you are, it is like having a superpower. And that is on a bottle of my wine because it's so true. So anyways, getting back to the conversation, you know, after the colleague, she was depleted. So how many times, and this has happened to me too, how many times have you gone and asked someone's opinion because you put them on a pedestal, right? It could be a colleague, it could be friends, your, your partner, um, be your family, your friends. And all of a sudden, you are like up here feeling aligned, like this is what I want to do. And then they give you their opinion and guess what? You, you feel squashed, right? You, you feel like this small. I know I've been there. I've been there when I've asked people for opinions, when I'm like, wait a minute, this is, this is an alignment with who I am. I've actually had some really horrible coaches telling me that I couldn't do something. Uh, and I always say, don't tell me what I can do. <laughs> I'll prove you wrong. But anyways, this is how you feel. This is how you feel when you take on the opinions of other people that don't have your back. You think they have your back, but in essence, they don't understand you. They don't understand that you have a unique formula and that you know what's most aligned with you. So the question is, how do you tap into that? How do you let go of what other people are telling you what to do or not to do? This is very dangerous. Most people, particularly women, they live for other people's approval. So I wanna let you in on a little secret. You have to stop, absolutely, you have to stop seeking the approval of other people if you wanna get ahead in your business, your career, your relationship, any area of your life, okay? So a lot of women, we have been raised as little girls to be so perfect and, and oh, don't talk back and you've just gotta you know, mind yourself, right? You can't speak out. And it's so dangerous, you know, it's so toxic, it's so dangerous that it creates a lot of second guessing, right? Because we have put other people up on a pedestal and we've never been taught, wait a minute, is this what you want to do? Is this your truth? Or do you feel aligned with it? So you want to get back to yourself. So one of the things that I, uh, after I do the values assessment, is to spend quiet time where you can really, you know, know exactly, is this the path that I want to go down? Or is this someone else's path? Someone's pushing me to go down their path. How many times have you seen your parents tell you that you have to get whatever certain degree or you've got to do whatever, you, you got to have kids, like all of these beliefs that are forced onto us and fed to us at a very young age, if you don't challenge those beliefs, right? So we are stuck in this paradigm and that's where a lot of times, especially when I'm working with women, they have no idea who they are. They can be very smart. I work with extremely smart, intelligent uh, women. Some have master's degrees, some have PhDs, but yet, when it comes to second guessing themselves, they're so in their head, 
they're so in their head. Heather, should I stay in this marriage? You know, everyone else says I should. Everyone else says I should work it out. Well, the only person that knows it is you. So my thing is, why listen to the outer voices? When you make the outer voices in your life larger and louder than that inner voice, that, the, that intuition, that is what is going to keep you small. And I don't want people, especially women, if you have a vision that you feel aligned with, even if it feels like different than what other people are doing, uh, I always say when people are zigging, you've got a zag. And so you, you want to be that visionary that knows herself. And, and it's hard. It, uh, I'm going to tell you, it's challenging trying not to listen to other people. So what you want to do is, number one, you want to know who you are. You want to understand what your values are. It's fingerprint specific to who you are. And it's demonstrated right now in your life. So if people want to pivot in their business and they find that their business is not going down the track that they want, chances are they're injecting the values of a guru or someone else, parents, friends, colleagues that don't understand that there is a formula guiding you. It's like a GPS system in your brain. And this goes back to the Greeks where they called, uh, they called it living from the telos, living from the highest, uh, most meaningful thing that a human being can do. We're always living by it. It's, it's like we're focused. And when we start second guessing ourselves and we start second guessing because we are injecting the values of other people, that's when we start attracting chaos. So here's a real simple thing that you can do. Look to see where you're attracting chaos in any area of your life, okay? Chances are, number one, you're not clear, okay? So I teach people how to create a clear, fearless vision so that they become in alignment, right? That they, that they know who they are. But you want to make sure that your vision is clear because when you're not clear, and, and this has happened to me, you know, I'm just sharing my stories because I've been there before. When I was not clear, what happened is I started to attract chaos. So in my form of chaos, it happened in relationships. When I was not clear in my relationships and what I wanted, it happened in my business. So when I was not clear in my business, what happened is I started attracting clients to me that were an energy drain. And I was creating my business model based on what everyone else was doing. So we get the second guessing ourselves. We also get as women comparing ourselves to other people. I could do a whole nother video in and of itself. How many times have you compared yourself to someone else saying I should be over there? And I'm here to tell you, you are in the perfect place. Once you let go of comparing yourself to other people that you perceive, and it's all about perception, that are more successful than you, then you're going to be on that path. You're going to be in alignment. Uh, so many times, I can tell you, I would stop what I was doing, get distracted, compare myself to someone else because I thought I should be there. Now, my question is, where is that coming from? Where is that data coming from that I should be somewhere else? Well, guess what? This happens, these beliefs are formed at a very young age. Uh, so beliefs in your childhood, beliefs that society are injected, they're injecting these beliefs 24 seven. And I'm here to tell you, if you can just stay in your own lane and focus on your vision, your mission, your purpose, whatever you wanna do, What's going to happen is you're going to tune out that second guessing voice, okay? You're going to tune out comparing yourself to other people. This is what I hate about Instagram. I have a love-hate relationship with social media. I can connect with millions of people, which is awesome. But I hate social media as well because they've actually done studies on this, is that particularly uh, women and young girls are being negatively impacted on Instagram because of the comparison, more so, more so than boys. Uh, so we find that there's a huge mental health issue because of how we keep comparing ourselves to other people. So if you get on Instagram and you're looking at someone's you know, Instagram and you have a business and like, wow, this is so amazing, number one, you know, their life is curated. I appreciate the beautiful pictures. Hey, I have some nice pictures on there too, but you know, it's a curated life. 
It's not real. And if I were to follow them around 24 seven, I would see the other side. Okay. So you have to be mindful when you start looking at other people's stuff, what is real and what's not real. Is this curated? Is this filtered, right? What is the reality of it? And then let it go. And then you've got to focus 100% on, onto you because when we get into second guessing, this whole video has been about second guessing yourself. It happens. I want you to find your triggers. The moment it happens, you could be on Instagram comparing your Instagram with someone else. I don't have enough followers. Well, guess what? A lot of those followers, people buy them. Okay. Let's just be honest. Um, so you, you, you know, again, you fall into that trap. You listen to some guru telling you that doesn't even know you, they don't know your values, they don't know your history, telling you you should do this when you're like, okay, I guess, but it doesn't feel in alignment, okay? So that's another issue. Then you have the second guessing with your colleagues, your friends, if you're in a relationship, women, okay? I know a lot about this. If you're in a relationship with your partner that's second guessing yourself and you need approval, I'm telling you, you'll, not, you'll never get far if you live for that approval. So you can use it as fuel, right? So that you don't second guess yourself because a woman that knows who she is, is not going to allow her partner to impact her vision, period. Uh, I actually teach clients how to use their partner that does not approve of their vision or whatever they want to do as fuel. So you either use it as fuel or you let go of that relationship period. And I'm 100% like, I, I just feel so unwavering about that. You either use it as fuel or you let go because here's the reality of it. If you're in a relationship where you're constantly second guessing yourself because the person is putting you down, like really down in the pit, it's not going to work. Okay. It's not going to work. I don't care how long you've been married. I don't care how long you think, oh, you know, I know this person. If you can't use it as fuel, it's going to go the opposite. Your business actually is going to go the opposite or your career is going to go the opposite. And I have worked with so many women all around the world, all different backgrounds. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I know the story. So again, let's go back to tying this all together. Second guessing yourself. Number one, know who you are. Number two, have a clear vision of what you want in your life. And number three, know where you are blocking yourself. Do you need the approval of everyone else to check off, right? Sign off before you do something. Because if you do, you're never going to get far and you're always going to live for the approval of other people. And we are not here on this planet to live our lives for our parents, our partners, our kids, anyone else. Because if you follow that model, you will create resentment. You will create imbalances in your physiology. I 100% guarantee it. So you got to be true to yourself. I hope this video helped today. Uh, I could talk a lot about comparison, how that impacts every single area of your business in your life. So if you see yourself as a female visionary and leader, you must be able to lead yourself. You must be able to let go of the approval, the rejection, the second guessing yourself. Now, not to say that you're never gonna second guess yourself. There are times where I've had th that fleeting thought of second guessing myself and I said, wait a minute, why, why am I even second guessing myself? I'm second guessing myself because I injected someone else's values that doesn't really understand who I am. So it happens to everyone. But the secret is not to stay in that situation where you're listening to other people, where you're putting other people's opinions up here and yours down below. So I hope this video helps you today. Hey, everyone that has joined me, Sandy, John, Carolyn. Uh, and if you're watching the replay, type in R and let me know how this video is helpful for you. I will make more videos. I will continue to make more videos because this is what I believe. This is my vision, mission, and purpose. And I am here to empower millions of women on this planet to own every single area of their life, particularly using a uh, business or career as their catalyst. Until next time, this is Heather Pickin and live fearlessly. Take care, everyone.